I was a little bit annoyed with myself for missing the 60th anniversary of the building of the Berlin Wall, a subject that would have made a great video for this channel. On the other hand, it's a very depressing subject, and I am just in time for the 32nd anniversary of the beginning of the end of the Berlin Wall. So let's do that instead. It didn't happen anywhere near Berlin. It did set in motion a chain of events that culminated with the fall of the Berlin Wall, but it was in fact on the border between Austria and Hungary. The year is 1989. Europe is divided by a border known as the Iron Curtain, which actually cuts through Germany, dividing it into two. To the west are countries aligned with the US, most as members of NATO. To the east are countries aligned with the Soviet Union, members of the Warsaw Pact. Life in the east was it was objectively bad. Standards of living were quite low. Citizens' rights and freedoms were seriously curtailed. And governments weren't afraid to use mass surveillance and even to imprison people if they dared criticise the regime. But in 1989, things were starting to change. The Soviet Union had in Mikhail Sergeyevich Gorbachev a new leader who was introducing reforms to bring a little democracy to Eastern Europe and maybe even end the Cold War. East Germany, or as it was officially called, the German Democratic Republic, was dead set against the very idea of democracy. It's a kind of a running gag that a country with democratic in its name is often not democratic. In any case, while many other Warsaw Pact countries were starting to follow Gorbachev's lead, East Germany remained hardline. Earlier that year, its leader Erich Honecker had defiantly predicted that the Berlin Wall would remain for another century. At this point, it's worth remembering that his predecessor, Walter Ulbricht, had stated that nobody intended to build a wall just a few weeks before the construction of the Berlin Wall. Hungary had always been a little bit more relaxed. Its border with Austria was heavily guarded and fortified, but it was relaxed enough that it was a great place for German families that had been divided by the Iron Curtain to meet up. East Germans could visit as tourists quite easily and often stayed at campsites around the tourist attraction that was Lake Balaton. They were joined by their West German relatives who had an easier time getting visas for Hungary than they did for East Germany. This year was slightly different though. Hungary had started dismantling some of the border fortifications on the grounds that they were expensive to maintain and unnecessary. The usual thousands of East Germans arrived for their camping holidays, the usual thousands of West German relatives came and went, but the East Germans stayed. They didn't go home again. They just stayed there in their tents and caravans. The Hungarian government actually started to get a bit worried about this because within a few months the weather would start to get bitterly cold. Meanwhile, the president of an organisation called the Pan-European Union, Otto von Habsburg, had an idea. And if you know your European history, the name Habsburg should ring a bell. This was none other than the son of the last Kaiser of Austria and King of Hungary. The Pan-European Union was formed in the 1920s to campaign for closer European integration, and von Habsburg thought that it would be a very nice idea to celebrate the two countries' close ties with the Pan-European Picnic. After all, they'd once been unified in the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Not that von Habsburg was suggesting reunification, that had been out of the question since 1918, but the pan-European society was all about opening up the borders, and so naturally von Habsburg would want to celebrate the gradual dismantling of the very physical border that was dividing the territory his ancestors had once ruled over. This would also be an opportunity to test the Soviets' reaction to an open border. How far did Gorbachev's reforms actually go? 
The picnic would take place at the border near the city of Chopron and for three hours a border gate would be open allowing Hungarians and Austrians to mingle. The date was set for the 19th of August 1989. Flyers were produced inviting anybody who wanted to attend. German language flyers were distributed in Austria and flyers in Hungarian in Hungary. Somehow, and there's a rumour that the West German intelligence agency was involved, an awful lot of German language flyers found their way up to Lake Balaton. As it happens, the Germans reacted with caution. They couldn't be sure that this was really happening or that this wasn't some sort of a trap. But 661 of them took the risk and ran across the border past the armed guards. And the guards did nothing. More importantly, the 80,000 Soviet troops stationed in Hungary were not ordered to intervene. In the following days the border was closed again because the Hungarian government was worried that a mass exodus might prompt hardliners in Moscow to depose Gorbachev and reverse all of his reforms. But then one German was killed trying to cross the border and the Hungarian Prime Minister, realising that from now on he would be personally held responsible for every death, made the decision that within a few weeks the border would be fully open and the East Germans camping out at Lake Balaton would be allowed to cross it before the freezing cold weather set in. And after that, it was only a matter of time before the Berlin Wall itself fell, which, despite the best efforts of the East German government, it did, late at night on the 9th of November. Uh, thank you for watching. This video turned out to be a little bit longer than I expected, so if you're listening to me telling you this, then hats off to you for making it to the bitter end. As for me, I'm actually tired of talking now, so I'll just shut up.